Okay. Which of these two forces would affect the rotation more? Force one or force two? Oh, at that distance? Force two. Force two, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Now, even before you took any physics, this should have just been common sense. If you ever played in a teeter-totter, you would know that um, the further away you are from the fulcrum, the more you can affect the rotation of the object. Um, so something else that matters here is how far you are from the, how far you are from the pivot. Um, and the okay. easiest way, uh, so what we could, uh, so we need a, 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 a symbol then for how far the force is from the pivot how far the force is from the pivot, so we can call that r. We use r for distance very often. What, what is the r, the distance between? It's the distance between where the force is being applied and the pivot. Okay. r is our force between uh, where the uh, force is being applied and the pivot. That's okay. why I was, okay, so that's like r, and he was, I thought he was calling r as a radius, so is that radius, does that r stand for radius as well? I mean, it's no, probably best to just think about that as distance. Um, distance however, distance. yeah, uh, in a sense it kind of is the radius because it, um, it is kind of the radius of the circle that would be traced it by rotation. But it, it's really best to think of it as just a, a measure of distance. distance. It's the distance between okay. the, the pivot and the, the point where the force is being applied. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and we can see that in, a, in an extreme case. Suppose that somebody was pushing right on the fulcrum. Would that make the object rotate? No, because he did tell us that, that that's perpendicular to the force or something. Now, here I'm not really focusing so much on the idea that it's perpendicular. Suppose that the okay, force so was... Suppose that they were pushing like this, right where the fulcrum is. Um, would that cause oh. any rotation? No, that still would cause any rotation. Yeah, and again, this should be common sense. This is something we would know even without taking any physics. Um, that You know that when you push at the fulcrum, you don't cause rotation. I can use my pen here as an example. So I if I push here, I can make the pen rotate. And if I push here, it's easier to make the pen rotate. But if I push here, it's not rotating, right? Can you see what I'm doing on the, uh, on the video? Yeah, if I, uh -huh. so at this point, the fulcrum is where my thumb is. Well, I can't make it rotate around my thumb by pushing right on this point. That can't cause any rotation. All right, so anyway, this demonstrates again that it's not enough to look at the force to figure out how much something is going to rotate. You also have to look at how far from the fulcrum or how far from the pivot the force is being applied. Okay. okay. And the mass, right? That is also going to affect uh, how much it's going to rotate. That's right. But that's a separate concept. That's our moment of inertia concept. Remember, that's the analogy to mass. All we want to focus on now is the push or the pull that's causing the rotation. And that's what we're going to put in the torque. So let's right. keep thinking about that. So which of these forces can cause a rotation, F1 or F2, or both? F1. Yeah, again, this is just common sense. We shouldn't need any physics for this. Um, it should be common sense that you can't cause a rotation by pushing kind of um, parallel to the object. F2 here okay. is just kind of pushing parallel to the object. It, it should be kind of common sense that that can't cause any um, rotation. We can see that with my pen analogy again here. So right now I'm pushing perpendicular to the pen, and that causes a rotation. But I can't cause any rotation now. Now I'm pushing parallel to the pen. That can't cause any rotation. So only a perpendicular push here can cause a rotation, not the parallel push. All right. Um, okay. So it'll, it'll take a little bit more work to uh, explain, explain that. What we have to do is we have to draw an R vector. R is the vector from the pivot to the point of application of the force. R is a vector that's going from the pivot to the point of application of the force. Let me rewrite this like this. From 
give it the point of application of friction. That's right. From the pivot to the point of application of the force. So for example, right now I'm going to draw, so I'm going to draw uh, R1. R1 is going from the pivot here to where the force is being applied. So this would be our R1. So it basically okay. measures the distance between the pivot and the point where the force is. Okay. Or suppose I had here F2. How would we draw R2? Where does R2 start and where does R2 end? R2 would start from the pivot mm -hmm. to the F2. To where the F2 is being applied. That's right. So here would be R2. So you can see that um, the R vector is basically measuring how far the force is from the pivot or the focus. Alright, okay. so that's going to be an important step for finding the torque, always drawing the R vector. So from here to here, in the second point, we're going to see that's going to be actually okay. okay. Okay, well, now let's suppose um, that we're dealing with this force. Now, notice that this force is not parallel to the object or perpendicular to the object. It's kind of at a slant to the object. So it's going to be more difficult to figure out what the, um, the torque is that's coming from this force. Well, I'm going to go ahead and draw in um, our R vector. All right, maybe I'll, I'll draw the, uh, this over here. This will be easier. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in the R vector. Well, where does the R vector start? It starts at the pivot, and it goes to the point of application of the force, like this. So here's the R vector. All right, now let's try breaking this force into components. So... So here's our two components of the force. Which way are the uh, components pointing? Is the vertical component pointing up or down? The vertical component mm -hmm. um, is pointing down. Because the overall vector is pointing down. Right. And how about the horizontal component? Is that pointing right or left? It's pointing to the right. Because the overall vector is pointing to the right. Okay, good. Um, now, in the past, we would have called these components things like uh, fx and fy, right? f sub x and f sub right. y. But we're not going to use that terminology when we're dealing with torque. Uh, when we're dealing with torque, we're not comparing the force to our axes. Instead, we're comparing the force to the r vector. Now we're going to be comparing the force to the r vector. Um, and what we want to know is which component of the force is parallel to the r vector and which component of the force is perpendicular to the r vector. So which, which component here of the force is perpendicular? Perpendicular to the R vector, is that the horizontal or the vertical? It is the um, vertical. So perpendicular? That's right. So I'm going to label that like this. Now, in the past, we would have called that F sub Y. But here I'm not thinking about an X or a Y axis. I want to compare the force to the R vector. So I'm going to call that R perpendicular. But that's just shorthand for the component of the force that's perpendicular to the R vector. R Okay. It, does that say 30 degrees in that corner? Uh, sorry, I was trying to make it say 20 degrees. The okay, 20 no, degree that's angle. Right. All right. All right. Um, and then how would I label this horizontal side down here? Uh, it'd be parallel, so yeah. it'd be F parallel. So that's the symbol for parallel. I hope you guys are familiar with these symbols for parallel and perpendicular. Um, now, what does this mean? This means the component of the force that's parallel to the R vector. Okay. Now, um, which of these two components is causing rotation? The perpendicular component or the parallel component? The parallel component. Right? Let's see if you're... No, no, no. 
Okay, which one, which force? force which component of the force is, is making the... Perpendicular, yeah. Just yeah, the perpendicular. Okay, good. That's the idea that we were talking about before, right? We saw with the pen, yeah. if you push perpendicular to the pen, that causes the pen to rotate. But if you push parallel to the pen, you're not causing any rotation, right? Um, now, this is a more difficult case because now we're pushing kind of uh, at a diagonal to the pen. Well, if you're pushing at a diagonal, then only the component of your push that's perpendicular actually causes any rotation. The component that's parallel is not causing any rotation. So now we have to um, improve our formula for the torque. Instead of saying that the torque is F times R, we should say that it's F perpendicular times R. D did your instructor use these types of symbols in, cl in class? Uh, yeah. Yes? Okay, good.